Patriots coach Bill Belichick has assembled a pretty formidable defense for 2023. The only question is, will he get to enjoy it from the hot seat? Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful. Thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. We are a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I am your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well at L-O underscore Patriots. Man, Pats fans, thank you once again for joining me here today. As you can see, inclement weather can lead to some connectivity issues, but fear not. The cameras will be on in just a little bit here on Locked On Patriots. So thank you for staying locked in. And as always, a special shout out to all of you Locked On Everydayers out there. I'm always honored and humbled by your support. And of course, Pats Nation, in the wake of DeAndre Hopkins taking his talents to Music City, we continue our look into the Pats positional depth charts. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the defensive line. And joining me here in just a moment, once again, folks, on camera, is my friend and colleague over at Patriots Country, Harrison Reno of SI Fan Nation, a rising star in the ranks of NFL media, and we're going to take a deep dive into the Pats defensive line from Lawrence Guy's holdout to Christian Barmore and all things in between. So stay locked in because Harrison is going to pop in here in just a moment. But first, New England Patriots head coach Bill Belichick, folks, long been considered one of the most successful at his profession across the vast landscape of organized team sports. Despite of what you'll hear a lot of on social media lately, you know, Bill Belichick is about as good as it gets when it comes to head coaching. Six Super Bowl championships, three Coach of the Year awards, just some of the accolades that Belichick has collected over the years. In fact, the aforementioned HC of the NEP is only 19 victories away from becoming the winningest head coach in NFL history. But according to some rumblings out there, his recent run of struggles, of course culminating with the team's failure to sign DeAndre Hopkins, might land Bill in hot water for 2023. Patriots insider Tommy Curran, not only a personal friend, but also someone whose opinions and reports I pay close attention to. He believes that the 71-year-old head coach is not only on the hot seat heading into the upcoming season, but that his coaching chair has been heating up for the past few years. In fact, the actual terms he used, folks, were different degrees of warmth since 2019. And I know. To hear that, it's a little bit unsettling. Curran's report may be jarring to some, especially those out there that consider both Bill Belichick and New England to be synonymous. But it really should come as little shock to those who understand the value that Robert Kraft places on winning. It's all about winning in Foxborough, folks. Any of you Patriot lifers out there know that that is all that matters in New England. And I hate to say it, folks, but the Patriots haven't been doing that on a consistent basis lately. Until Tom Brady decided he was heading down to Central Florida, success simply appeared to be a foregone conclusion for the Patriots in Foxborough. But the harsh reality is that the Pats were once again on the outside of the AFC playoff picture at the conclusion of 2022. They finished the season 8-9, and lost three of their final four games for the second consecutive year. And what may be most un of this Patriots run is that they struggled at most during a time of the season in which they used to be unbeatable in the past. And I'm talking about the late fall into early winter. The New England Patriots always dominated the latter part of November, the month of December, and then, of course, into January and February in playoff time. Didn't get to the playoffs this year, and they had some of their biggest struggles in the late season. So Patriots are trying to reverse that trend. And... 
if you look at it, they've got an uphill battle. Since their victory in Super Bowl 53 to close out the 2018 season, the Pats have failed to qualify for the playoffs twice. In the two seasons they did make the playoffs, they were quickly ousted in the wild card round. As a matter of fact, following Tom's departure prior to the start of 2020, the Patriots are just 25 and 26 overall. And there's a lot right now on the shoulders of Bill Belichick to turn this thing around. And once again, Tom Curran, speaking on NBC Sports Boston's Arbella Early Edition earlier this week, kind of reiterated those points. He said, quote, all of those together have Robert Kraft very much going, Bill, what are we doing? So, yeah, he's on watch, meaning that Robert Kraft has Bill Belichick under his sharp eye. And I don't think that's a revelation, folks. We've been getting hints on that for quite some time. Now, whether or not I believe Bill is on the hot seat, that might be a conversation for another day. But Tom is standing by his report. In fact, he doubled down on it on a recent appearance on the Rich Eisen Show, where he said that Gerard Mayo, who the Patriots, of course, retained this offseason, might even be the next in line if the Pats continue to struggle this year. Quote directly from Tom here. If they look disorganized, dysfunctional, and disciplines out the window, then they might say, that was a great run, Bill, but you can go upstairs and just watch Gerard coach next year. Now, I understand the sentiment here, folks. Patriots just lost out on DeAndre Hopkins. It looks like the Patriots were outmaneuvered by Tennessee, even though recent reports are indicating that the Patriots were more than willing to match that $15 million maximum that DeAndre was looking for. They just weren't willing to go the extra mile and guarantee more of it. They wanted to place more of it in incentives. So ultimately, what it came down to was the Patriots wanted him, but they wanted him at their price, and they weren't going to deviate from that. And I know a lot of you out there are wondering what this means for the Patriots moving forward. Well, with regard to Bill Belichick, anyone writing his epitaph right now, I think better stop the chisel in its place before things get out of hand. For all of his previous success, Nobody knows better than Bill Belichick that he needs to immediately guide the Patriots back to their winning ways in short order. And there's still a lot to clean up from last season. With the unsuccessful installation of assistant coach Matt Patricia as the offensive play caller, yeah, we all know how that worked out, as well as some of the rumored tension that he had with Mac Jones. I know Bill Belichick is eager to put last season behind both he and the team. And you can see it in the way they operated in the offseason. Patriots had coaching problems. They fixed those coaching problems. Hiring Bill O'Brien as the offensive coordinator, hiring Adrian Clem as the new offensive line coach, and extending Gerard Mayo. These are three excellent coaches with the ability to take the control over their given units that they need to and reinstall some discipline in the Patriots locker room. And I think these guys are absolutely the ones that players will listen to. Gerard kept a tight ship all of last year. We know the defense is going to be solid. But that offense is going to respond to guys like Bill and Adrian just simply in ways they didn't respond to Matt or Joe last year. And I think it's just because that they were out of their element, maybe giving the best effort that they had, but just a bad fit all the way around. So the Patriots look at those additions. They also brought in some players as well, folks. It hasn't all been on the coaching side. They bring in Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Gusecki. That's going to stabilize their core of pass catchers. And even with the odds seemingly stacked against him. Again, I believe that betting against Bill Belichick is likely an imprudent course of action. Over the past two decades, the Patriots have been one of the most disciplined and fundamentally sound teams in the NFL. Things have gotten a little out of hand over the course of the last couple of years, but ultimately that discipline, those sound fundamentals, it starts at the top at the head coaching position. And you know that Bill Belichick is always willing to learn. He's always willing to put in the time that he needs to get the maximum out of his players on the field. He's going to put that into practice. That's what sets him apart from anyone else. I know I hear a lot of you out there in Patriots Nation calling for Bill Belichick's job. And again, I understand the frustration. But the real question that I think everyone needs to ask themselves when you talk about Bill Belichick being ousted, is who comes in here and does a better job than what Bill Belichick can do on the field? That's a very tough question to answer. And if you're answering that quickly, saying, yeah, I know a guy right away that would come in and do a better job than Bill, you're probably not thinking of that question hard enough. I definitely assure you that Bill Belichick is one of the best, if not the best choice 
to be the head coach of the New England Patriots right now because what the Patriots need is a return to discipline. They need monotonous repetition on the practice field. That's something they're going to get from Belichick. He'll do it until it's ingrained deep into his players' bones. They're going to practice basic hand techniques. They're going to practice foot placements. They're going to become experts on ways to bat down passes, shed blockers, gain leverage. These are the tenets of a Bill Belichick coach defense and an offense as well. And simply put, they're going to do so until they get it right. Now, I will say this. They better, at the risk of sounding too blunt, there is a pressure on Bill Belichick to get these guys to play at a high level this year. Robert Kraft still has faith in his coach, but another losing season in Foxborough is going to be untenable. And the New England Patriots need to go into this season with a sense of urgency. It would take an epic fail, in my opinion, to get Bill Belichick removed from this job for 2024. But that's not to say that Robert Kraft won't do it if he believes it's in the best interest of the football team. If they're not responding to Bill anymore, then yeah, even the greatest coaches sometimes have to move on. But I think Bill Belichick is ingrained enough into the psyche of guys in that locker room where these players are going to respond now that they have the proper assistant coaches to play under and now that they have the proper personnel to do what they need to do on the field. So With the start of the 2023 season fast approaching, Bill Belichick is aware of the added scrutiny to which he's going to be subject in the coming months. He's taken the proper steps to ensure his team is prepared for the task at hand, and he's doing so with a sense of urgency, but he's not doing so with a sense of panic. At least, not yet. Folks, there's never a dull moment in Foxborough, and even if Bill Belichick is on the hot seat, he's still going to have to find a way to bring this team together. And one of the best ways for him to do that is to field a competent defense, and that starts on the defensive line. In just a moment, Harrison Reno of SI Fan Nation will join me, and we're going to talk all things Patriots defensive line when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But first, folks, Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right, just bet $20 and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose, that's $200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. Think Rocky's going to go yard? Put some coin on it and use FanDuel to do it. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $2,000 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Patriots fans, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And as we said to open the show today, Bill Belichick may be facing a stressful season for a lot of reasons. But one thing we always can credit Bill with is that he seems to ensure that a stellar performance from the defensive line is a key part of the success for his team one way or another. Here today to help analyze the Pats' prowess up front or perhaps lack thereof, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, is a rising star in the NFL media landscape. He covers not only your New England Patriots, but several other teams, including the Dallas Cowboys, Buffalo Bills, Baltimore Ravens, you name it, this guy can do it. He is my friend and colleague, Harrison Reno of SI Fan Nation. Welcome to Locked On Patriots, Harrison. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Mike. Uh, like I told you pre-show, first Patriots, uh, first NFL podcast. So glad to do it with you, my friend, a coworker, and somebody I've gotten to know uh, pretty well over the last, I guess, six months. I want to say maybe even yeah. less. Um, re- really appreciate it. Excited to dive into the defensive line. It's it's actually been kind of fun studying up on them uh, and, and fun to watch. Absolutely, they are fun to watch. And a Bill Belichick coach defense is usually full of surprises. It's definitely full of discipline, and those are two things that the Patriots are going to need this year in order to succeed. But it's our honor that you're joining us here for your first NFL podcast experience. What better way to kind of ingratiate yourself than here on the Lockdown Podcast Network? See, folks, this is why it's your team every day. Everyone is welcome here on Lockdown Patriots, and 
especially when I get to share the microphone with a valued colleague. It makes that all that much better. So, Harrison, I know we're going to jump into the defensive line in a minute. I know, folks, I did. Bear with me. But DeAndre Hopkins continues to be the story of the week, the story of the weekend for New England. You've covered this story pretty extensively for SI Fan Nation. Had a couple of great pieces out there, folks. Check those out. Harrison is doing an amazing job covering the New England Patriots for us this year. And um, you kind of pinpointed early on that the odds were drifting in the favor of the Tennessee Titans. What's your takeaway from all this from a Patriots perspective? And do you think that all of the vitriol that's being thrown at the organization, specifically Bill Belichick, is warranted in this case? I, for that last one, I, I don't think it is. And, and, and I forget who tweeted it, but I saw something on Twitter talking about it. It was a Patriots uh, you know, reporter, fellow reporter covering the Patriots. And it says, that, you know, at the end of the day, it's what Bill wants. Does Bill want DeAndre Hopkins that bad where he's going to go out there and give him, you know, a, a pretty, you know, huge financial commitment? Like, does Bill right. want that? Um, and the answer turned out to be no. Like, yes, they were pursuing him. Yes, they were after him. Had you know, as you covered yesterday, great talks were extensive talks with him. Uh, but at the end of the day, Bill didn't want to give him that deal. So uh, I, I don't think the vitriol is uh, warranted in this case. I think it's you know, you, you mentioned yesterday he likes to have that spare cash base going into the season uh, mm-hmm. for trades, anything that may pop up where he can make moves if he needs to. I, I don't think the vitriol is warranted. Now I know there is that sense of he's kind of shortchanging the offense. Uh, financially, not putting as much investment into it as people see. I can kind of see that here and there, but you know, I just I, I look. I, I like the Gasicki signing. I like Juju Smith Schuster. If both can stay healthy, I, I think this offense can get back to that 2021 level of you know production. So I don't think the vitriol is warranted. I just think uh, maybe people just need to sit back and kind of trust the plan here, trust the the mastermind behind the six Super Bowls. Um, you know, hopefully get them back to that. Yeah, very well said. And I opened the show today by talking about Bill Belichick all of a sudden finding himself on the hot seat. And NFL insiders, including one, Tommy Curran, who I hold in the highest regard. Tom is not only a personal friend, but someone that I always uh, take a lot of stock into his reports, stating that Bill Belichick is going to be coaching for his job this year. I think that's sort of the same thing every year. I think that's the way Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft are made up. They really, they value winning at that point so highly so to say that the deandre hopkins swing and a miss so to speak is the last straw when it comes to the new england patriots and bill belichick parting ways or bill belichick's job security yeah i think a lot of the vitriol being hurled in his way is probably not warranted and i also don't think it's caused to jettison him just yet but One thing I think we can agree on, my friend, is that the Patriots are going to be judged based on how they do this year. And one of the big keys to their success is going to be competence on defense, especially along the defensive line. I think the biggest story coming out of Patriots camp so far, or at least from OTAs and minicamp, is the holdout of Lawrence Guy, at least when it comes to that D line. Lawrence has been a stalwart here for a number of years. He's a player that I've covered. I've gotten a chance to get to know one of the great guys you'll meet. He's always one of the guys that the Patriots are putting up front, using as an example of this is what a typical prototypical Patriot should be like. So it came as a surprise to me when he was absent from OTAs and, and minicamp. You find out that it's due to a contract holdout and currently has two years remaining on his deal set to make $2 million with a $3.6 million cap hit in 2023. Now, obviously, Lawrence is looking to increase that amount. The Patriots always place a value on certain positions. We just saw that with DeAndre Hopkins. There's a level they're not going to go above. In judging from your research on Lawrence and what he brings to the table and knowing what you know about the Patriots' spending habits, where do you land on Lawrence Guy right now? Do you believe that there is a line the Patriots are not going to cross? And because of that, could Lawrence Guy have played his final down in New England? I, I don't. I don't think he has. I, I. I think these two sides will get together. You know, when you look at it from a, a fifty thousand feet perspective, like Lawrence Guy is very undervalued around the. I, I don't think people, unless you follow the Patriots or dive into them, you don't understand like how valuable he is. A guy like that, like these guys, don't always show up on the stat sheet. Their impact is not, you know, box score 
uh, box score wise. They 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 make impacts in other ways. They play team defense. That's kind of like the the mantra of all these Saban Belichick defenses is that they're they're not playing for the stats. They're playing for each other. You're gonna go take on a double team, so the guy next to you can go get the sack or something like that. So, mm-hmm. I, to me, uh, you know, like you said, he he's put in front of the media. He's trusted. He's a trusted voice in the locker room. Uh, I, I really think he you know, has a future in New England. But like you said, there, there is probably uh, a line that New England will not cross. They don't want to commit too much money um, mm-hmm. to somebody who, you know, may not have as much time in the league as somebody like Christian Barmore or, you know, Dietrich Wise. Right. Very well said. And Guy was a very good compliment to Dietrich Wise last year. And we saw the emergence of Dietrich really, I think, in – the pass rush really be a formidable force. And I think you're going to continue to see that he's taking on not only more of a leadership role in the locker room, but a much more active role on the field than we've seen in years past. But Guy is one of those reliable players that has been consistent really throughout the course of his Patriots tenure. Combined 101 regular season and playoff games he's appeared in. He missed three games with a shoulder injury in 2022, but he still had 46 tackles two sacks and five quarterback hits. I'm really going to be um, watching with a very close eye to see if he's among the Patriots that reports to training camp in the next few days, because if he continues his holdout into training camp, I'm not sure he's going to be in a position where he's not wearing out his welcome here in New England. And it would be a difficult end uh, to what has been an amazing tenure here in New England, not only the Super Bowl championships, but also being named to the all-decade team. The Ron Burton Community Service Award in 2021 was his from the Patriots. He was their nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year last year. So there's a lot uh, of history uh, here between Lawrence Guy and the Patriots. You'd hate to see a contract dispute bring about its end. But at the same time, the New England Patriots have a job to do, and they have to put a team on the field. Harrison, building off that for just a little bit, the Patriots obviously are not all about Lawrence Guy on the defensive line. I know you mentioned Barmore earlier, and we're going to dedicate a whole segment to Christian Barmore and the dominance that he can put forth on the table when he's healthy. But there are other players on this line that may need to step it up in 2023 in order to make the Patriots defense even better than it was last year. Who do you have your eye on as a potential breakout candidate among this group that's not named Lawrence Guy? I don't know if we can consider a breakout because he's young, really young, and it's Keon White. What does this do for him with Lawrence Guy kind of, you know, out of the picture right now? Like, what is what does his training camp look like? He's had OTAs. He's had rookie mini camp. He's had this time to kind of adjust and develop. I'm really curious to see where they play him, Mike, because uh, I could very well see him turning into that kind of five-technique uh, Dietrich Wise type role, maybe sliding four eye there. He's strong. He has some explosiveness to him, kind of like, Dietrich Wise does, you know, I'm I mean, also interested to see if they put weight on him uh, and maybe ask him to play a little three tech like Lawrence, but I want to see what his mm-hmm. role looks like on this defense. Uh, you know, Bel- this Belichick has a history of taking these defense line that you don't expect to have, you know, major impacts and turning them into something. Um, you know, it, it's just, like I said earlier, it's, it's team defense. These guys are playing for each other. And I, that's the one guy that I'm kind of curious about. Took him in the second round. He was invited to the draft. You know, he he's not some slouch out of you know out of Georgia Tech. He is he is a good football player. Um, very very curious to see where he plays. And I, I I'm gonna say him, um, because I I'm just curious with Lawrence Guy out of the picture. What does that mean for him? Does that mean he gets on the field early? It's a possibility. I mean, in terms of how we saw him used during minicamp and during OTAs, you saw him. A line at outside linebacker, that was a few times that you saw him take a few snaps there, set in a three-point stance, he rushed the passer, he played the run, he even dropped into coverage, which is something that I was told shortly after uh, drafting. There's no way, he's a run guy his first year, no way you're going to see him dropping into coverage. He was doing that during minicamp and during OTAs. So I love your suggestion about Keon White because you could put him anywhere along this defensive line. And he can play the position. He knows how to play all of these. And you can groom him into the type of player you need him to be, especially in year one. So I think that's a great choice. Um, Again, it's probably a cheat to say a rookie is going to break out because (laughs) he has nowhere to break butt out. But at the same time, 
I love the suggestion, and I think you're right on the money when it comes to that. He will be a guy to watch, and he already is a guy to watch, really, I mean, when you take a look at what the Patriots are doing. But I am really excited uh, to see what he can do this year as well. So excellent suggestion there. Since he's walked through the door here in Foxborough, Devin Godchow has been kind of enigmatic. You've seen flashes of his ability to make plays. You've seen his ability to stand in the middle and be a solid nose tackle. But the Patriots have redefined his role so much that I think it's been tough for him to find his niche. But signing a contract extension last year that's going to keep him in New England for the foreseeable future leads me to believe that the Patriots have high hopes for him. Where do you see Devin Godchow aligning for the Patriots this year? Is it nose? Is it a little bit more of a jack of all trades? What do you believe his role is going to be this season? I, I definitely think it's that zero technique. He's playing nose. I, I just think, you know, he's a big body. You can eat up, you know, double teams. And that's essentially what you want. And, you know, this Belichick defense is you want the guys in the middle to eat up double teams. You want to keep them off the linebackers so people like Bentley and Tavai can roll downhill, you know, unscathed and go after the, the football. Uh, so I, I think it's zero for him. Um, but you mentioned Carl Davis earlier. And that's somebody that I'm, you know, as well, kind of curious to see what his role plays out, if he can make the 53 um, after, like you said, after maybe a strong training camp like that. Uh, those two guys kind of played the middle last year, um, especially in early down situations. I, I, I think that's where Gotchaw plays. That's where he features. Mm-hmm. Um, but on third down, I think he comes off the field for somebody who we'll get into later. I don't want to uh, get too ahead of ourselves, but Barmore will play on third down. Um, kind of taking over his role. But I, I think Godshaw is definitely kind of that zero who can maybe stretch out to the three, um, kind of like you said, play up and down the interior of the defensive line. But I, I'm excited to see where he plays. Uh, for me, he's somebody I need to dive in a little bit deeper on uh, to kind of understand, you know, what he looks like even more. Because I think he's, you know, Barmore, you can turn on two games and, like, you kind of get the picture of him. I think Godshaw is maybe four or five games. Um, before you can kind of see that picture of what what his role is in this defense. Absolutely. Very, very well said. And I'm glad you mentioned Davis because a lot of people are thinking, well, okay, you've got Gotchow up front and you've got Carl Davis that's going to immediately back him up, and these two guys are the nose. Davis has been known to be a little bit of a jack-of-all-trades in terms of the Patriots plugging him in where they need him. Now, he's at his best as a two-gapping interior defensive lineman where he'll play the nose, he's got the size, that strength up front, You mentioned it perfectly. He's the type of guy you want to put in that defense that's going to allow the edge rushers to then flow freely to the ball. That's a little bit of a tongue tire. Flow freely to the ball. That's where you want these guys doing their job, folks. So in that regard, I think you're going to see Devon Godchow take on more of a specialized role this year rather than an undefined role. Harrison, it's always fun to break down defensive line. It may not be the sexiest position, but you know what? It's got teeth, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about when we come back for our final segment here in Locked On Patriots. Christian Barmore came into this league with a lot of high expectations, was a highly touted rookie. Injuries prevented him from seeing the field as much as he wanted to last year. But, folks, that does not mean that Barmore is not set for a potential breakout season in 2023. Harrison Reno of SI Fan Nation and I are going to discuss Christian Barmore and his potential impact on the New England Patriots. And I might even drop a line or two of why I believe he could be considered for the Patriots defensive MVP. All this and more when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. Patriots fans, thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Locked On Patriots. Remember, we are your team every day. And tomorrow here on the pod, our good friend, the Pats Cap himself, Miguel Benzon, will join us. And he's going to talk about that $18 million burning a hole in Bill Belichick's pocket right now. How can it be allocated? What will it be spent on? What held up the DeAndre Hopkins negotiations? And do the Patriots have enough in the tank for Dalvin Cook and operating costs for 2023. Miguel's going to break it all down meticulously to the penny, as he always does. So stay locked in to Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts. But today here on the pod, I am honored, I am grateful to be joined by my good friend and colleague, Harrison Reno of SI Fan Nation, talking all things Patriots defensive line. And Harrison, we even got a little DeAndre Hopkins discussion in there. Gotta love it. It's the gift that keeps on giving. But you've 
put forth some amazing wisdom and counsel when it comes to the Patriots defensive line, giving insight on everybody from Dietrich Wise to Keon White to Devon Godchap. Now I'm going to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about someone who has, I don't want to say yet to live up to expectation, but injury has kept him off the field and really, I think, stunted him from being the type of player he can be. I expect he will be this season, and that's Christian Barmore. Entering the second year with lofty expectations, that knee injury kept him off the field for seven games. But we're seeing and hearing rumblings about a resurgent Christian Barmore, someone that can come in and play the way we all believe he can, and the player that he showed flashes of being in his rookie season. In terms of his importance to this defensive line, Harrison, what do you see in Christian Barmore that leads you to believe he could be the key to its success in 2023? He's explosive. Uh, as I've learned from uh, a past coworker, he, he's the definition of a flash player. Anybody, whether you know a lot about football or not, you can turn on the tape and boom, he's going to flash. He's going to stand out. He's going to do something that's freaky. He's going to do something that's impressive. Whether he's going to push the the center into the quarterback's lap or he's going to blow behind with a slim move, you know, two seconds into the snap. Like it's just to to me, he he wins. Uh, doesn't show up on the box score. You, you got to find those advanced analytics uh, to really see his impact in the stat sheet. Uh, I, I believe he had like 40 something pressures as a rookie, which is mind blowing for an interior defense alignment to get 40 pressures. Uh, and he had half that last year in half the snaps. So uh, just, just a little bit of snapshot what he can do there, but I'm just, just his pass rushing ability. You, you don't find many interior defense alignment that can rush the passer like he does not like, you know, he hasn't played like Aaron Donald, uh, and he may not ever play like Aaron Donald, but he's bringing a similar type of impact on a smaller scale. He's going to get after the passer. He's, go- he's going to affect games on third down. Uh, to me, you know, would you like to see him play three downs? Absolutely. But do you need him to play three downs? No, because you got people like Lawrence Guy, Devon Godshaw, and Dedrick Wise who can also help out and kind of keep him fresh. So to me, it's his explosion. It's his, you know, his, it just seems like he's always winning, and he may not finish. He may not finish the drill with a sack or a tackle for a loss, but you go watch him on tape, and he's already you know whooping offensive linemen's butt from snap to snap. It seems like. Yeah, no question. And you go back to his first season in the NFL, and his commanding double teams so early really told me everything I needed to know about how opposing offenses want to attack Christian Barmore and neutralize him and keep him from being uh, a problem for opposing quarterbacks. He was drawing double teams, allowing guys like Matthew Judon to be able to get free and get after the quarterback. Judon said this himself. I remember sitting in a press conference at Gillette Stadium and hearing Matthew Judon say, yeah, you know what? Put three guys on Barmore. You know, it really, it helps the team. It helps everybody. Barmore's presence and just his ability mandates that type of coverage. Whether you want to cover him that way or whether you don't, you're almost forced to. Because if you don't and you put him one-on-one, he's going to get the opportunity to get after the quarterback. He's so athletic for a guy his size. Um, Excellent range for someone with his type of size. And that, to me, is what makes him so versatile, so good, and such a big part of the interior of the uh, uh, the defensive line. He may be aligning with the starters on the 4-3 defensive set, but with the Patriots decide they want to switch down with a 3-4 front, which is where I think they really love to play, um, you could see him start as a left side defensive tackle in that front. So he has the ability to do either. Um, I know coming into our discussion today, you said you saw a lot on Christian Barmore on film. Uh, is there a moment that particularly stood out to you or you're like, wow, that was pretty amazing? Um, or something that kind of gave you the indication that if this guy's clicking on all cylinders this year and he's healthy, this is going to be an even scarier defense than it was last year? The Steelers game stands out. One of the last clips before I hopped on here was him just backing up the center into, uh, I believe it was, ooh, I'm blanking on his name, Trubisky's lap, right into mm-hmm. Trubisky's lap. Just, just taste him right there. But from a whole snapshot standpoint, that Dolphins game in week 18, you go back and watch it. Oh, my. He might have been the best player on the field when mm-hmm. the Patriots defense is on the field. I mean, he had seven total pressures. Like, like I said, may not always get the sack, but it's, you know, in the NFL, you have 2.5 seconds, I believe it is, to to get a sack. That's when the ball is going to be out. And he may not get that sack, but my God, is he going to hurry a quarterback to get a ball out, uh, do a check down? Because he's just, I mean, he's winning. 
it, it sometimes it just seems instant. It's like he he knows what he needs to do to win, and he wins. And that's that's the big thing. And I, I just that, that that Dolphins game, you know, if you if you want to go have some fun, go watch that because Christian Barmore is a ha- he's a fireball to watch that game. Yeah, he absolutely is, and I know exactly the game that you're talking about. And really, I think throughout his entire body of work, when he's healthy and feeling good, and he's dialed in. He has that ability to take on the double team, but he can locate the ball. He chases quickly, and he's got great effort. And that effort is what really, I think, makes him effective both in stuffing the run and challenging the passer. He really made a concerted effort from his time in Alabama into his time with the Patriots to really make sure that not only did he maintain his quick hands, but made them even quicker. And that's something that I'm going to be watching this year. If he's putting that time in and he's getting quicker off the block in those areas then you know that Christian Barmore is dialed in and ready to make an impact and I think he is that important to this defensive line if he is healthy and he's playing at the top level that he's capable of playing it takes that defense to another level and this Patriots defense was its strong suit last year it will continue to be its strong suit in 2023 but a healthy Christian Barmore and a dialed in Christian Barmore is going to make them potentially, I believe, a top five unit in this league. So, folks, I said that, not Harrison. Send your hate mail to me if you don't think so. But at the same time, I think we're both in agreement that it's going to be a lot of fun covering this defense this year, especially this D-line. And, folks, this is definitely um, something that I've enjoyed here on Locked On Patriots. And I know you've enjoyed his wisdom and counsel, too. Harrison, we would love to have you back here on the pod throughout the season, continuing to break down all things New England Patriots. But for the benefit of our new listeners or all of our everydayers out there, because this is your first time here, please let everyone know where they can interact with you, uh, where they can find your great written work, and things that you have coming down the pike here from the great pen, the great voice of Harrison Reno. Thank you, Mike, for having me. Uh, like, like I said before, this is awesome. Uh, first NFL podcast, and it's been a ton of fun. Uh, defense lines, yeah, I, I know not a lot of people like it because uh, it's in the trenches and, you know, they're doing the dirty work. But as somebody who considers himself a football fanatic and wants to learn more about the game, uh, the trench is where I start. It's just mm. so fun to watch, you know, great players like Barmore, great players like Aaron Donald. Um, and I know Barmore's not on that level yet, and he may never get to that level. But it, it's people like – it's players like that that you want to watch, uh, and that what drives me to watch the, the, the you know both lines of scrimmage. But you can find me on Twitter, like you see on the screen at Harrison Reno on Twitter. And hey, go check us out at Patriots Country. We put out a lot of articles a day. Uh, put hard work into that. Uh, Mike and I have a ton of fun covering this team. And hey, Mike, give yourself some credit. You also cover a number of those teams, same teams that I do, buddy. Uh, <laughs> you know, from East Coast to the West Coast, we do it all over there. At SI Fan Nation, um, got got some great coworkers as well. Uh, I, I mean, it's awesome. We we have a great time. It truly is. Uh, and a tip of the cap and a nod of the gods to Mike Fisher, Richie Witt, Jeremy Brenner, Mac Latson, um, Tim Ham, all of the great editors that we have uh, at the SI Fan Nation team. Uh, we really do enjoy working with one another. It's a collaborative effort, very similar to what you see, folks, amongst the Locked On Podcast Network and the great hosts that we constantly have in and out of here, all over each other's timelines, all over each other's podcasts. It is a, a true collaborative effort. And working with great colleagues such as Harrison, who, again, I say without hesitation and without qualification, is a true rising star in this business. Remember the name, remember the great work, because once you're hooked on it, you're going to want to keep consuming it. And that's why we want to have him back here on Locked On Patriots this year as much as possible. And who knows, maybe throughout the Locked On Podcast Network, you might see Harrison pop up on a Cowboys show or a Ravens show. That's just how we roll and how we do things here. But in the meantime, don't forget, tomorrow here on the pod, Miguel Benzon, the salary cap top gun himself, the Pats cap joins us to set the record straight on all the cap myths floating around out there surrounding DeAndre Hopkins. Dalvin Cook, he's going to talk about all of that. Miguel is always entertaining. But in the meantime, folks, thank you for spending time here on Locked On Patriots. I encourage you to stay safe and stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone. On behalf of Harrison Reno and myself, enjoy. And we'll be talking to you right here again tomorrow on Locked On Patriots.